Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I hope you're all really well. In this video today, we are going to be making this happy new home card and we are going to be foiling the card in this gold here. So I'm going to teach you how to do that and I'm going to show you the whole design process. So let's get started without any further ado and jump straight on in. Let's quickly run through all of the materials and supplies that we're going to need for this project then. If you are doing it with the foil method, like I'm going to show you in this video, you are going to need a Heidi Swap Mink Foil Applicator Machine. This is the 12-inch one that you can just see in the corner of the shot here. You can get a 6-inch one as well. If you haven't got this particular machine but you do have a laminator at home, you can also use that as well. To go alongside the machine, you're going to need some toner reactive foil. This is their own brand one. I bought this from Hobbycraft when I first got my Mink Machine and this is the gold one that I'm using here. You you can get other foils which I have used and I will tag some of those down below in the description for you so if you want to check those out you can. So you're going to need some foil. Then you're going to need either a pre-cut, pre-scored card like this. It comes with a card and an envelope. This is a big pack that I've got here. You can pick these packs up at the range. They sell them in Hobbycraft as well. All different colours and sizes. Um, this is a 7 inch by 7 inch square and as I say it has a white envelope with it too. I prefer these because it then just saves me having to make a card and an envelope and it misses out a step when you are actually doing your project so it does save a little bit of time. Then I've got some really nice glitter card. This is the champagne coloured glitter cardstock. You're going to be able to pick this up on my store pretty soon so keep an eye out for that and when it's on there and it's live I'm going to pop a link down below for you so you'll be able to check that out. There's going to be lots of different colours of this but this is the champagne glitter card stuck. Then I have just some white pretty thin stuff. This is I think 160 GSM and this is what I'm going to put through my laser printer when I print my design. Then over here I've just got a few basic supplies uh, that you might want to use. I have my pick-me-up tool, a weeding tool, I've got a true control knife blade there, a little pen, some scissors and some glue. I may also use some 3D foam pads but I haven't got those out yet, they're still in their box. So now that we've gone through everything we're going to need, let's get started with the design. So this is the design that I've put together in Cricut Design Space and I will be sharing this with you so you'll be able to pick this up from my profile. If you don't know how to find something from somebody's profile I will pop a video above now in a card for you and down below in the description so you'll be able to check out my profile and find this project. Everything that you see on the screen now will be shared in that project for you. So all I've done is picked up this really nice image from Cricut Access and if I just click on it here and right click it's going to show me the image number for that particular one. I'll click on it here for you so you can see it and that is the one I'm using. If you click on these three dots here you can check similar images and you'll be able to see similar things so there's a spooky version of it there as well. Um, and a couple more that look more sort of gingerbread housey, don't they? So they might be good for Christmas stuff. So that's the one I'm using today. I have then just made myself a little sentiment across the top that says Happy New Home. And the font that I have used for that, let me just go over there and just right click and find that for you, is called A Perfect Day. It is a Cricut Access font, so you will need a subscription for the images and the fonts that I'm using in this video. But if you don't have a subscription, you can always try the 30 day free trial and you can cancel that whenever you want to as well. So that is what I've done. And then I've got a couple of small offsets here and another one on this image here so when I'm doing foiling what I need to do let me just start again for you what I'm going to do is come over here to my images again and I'm just going to search for house and that's the one I've got there so let's add it to the canvas so as you can see this is a single layered image, if I roll it over that you can see straight through it. So what we need to do is attach that to something in order so that it's going to print and it's not going to cut each one of these details out individually. So we just want to make sure that this is the blackest black that we can get. So we just want to come on here and click that one. It might have been on this one which is like more of a charcoal colour but when we're printing out for foiling it needs to be as black as black can be. So we just make sure that we've got that correct colour on there. 
Once we've done that, all I'm going to do is select that little house there, come up to the offset, and then I'm just going to use this sliding bar just to drag that down towards the centre to make it a little bit thinner. I'm going to make it about um, 2.8 there we go and then we can see that's come up as grey what we want to do now is just choose that offset again and we want to make that white so now you can see that is there you can see actually on the offset there are a few little holes in it now we don't want those so what I'm going to do is just move my house out of the way I'm going to click on that then I'm going to come down and use the contour tool to fill these in. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can use the contour tool or you can do it with a shape. I'm going to use the contour tool for this one. So if I come down to the bottom, click on contour, you can see all of those dots are here and then they are all listed on the right hand side here and you can see there's lots and lots of tiny little, little blobs. They're going to make little holes in my design and I don't want that. So all I'm going to do in this instance is click on hide all contours. Now if there was a couple that I wanted to keep for instance, maybe I wanted to keep that, I can just click back to it and as you can see behind there it's appeared back on there. I don't want it though so I am going to get rid of it. But occasionally you'll find it's very difficult to click like these tiny tiny bits here. But those really small ones will always be the very last ones that you come to on the drag column on the right hand side so just bear that in mind once you've got rid of all the contouring that you need to if you just click on this cross and it takes you back to it there then you can put your house back over the top you can select both of those layers and we want to just make sure that that is aligned to the center perfectly and that is now next then what we're going to do is select both of those layers again make sure they're both selected by checking in the layers panel on the right hand side once you've got them both highlighted in the green if you just come down to the bottom again and click on flatten now that has turned those two layers into a print then cut so you can see that that has turned from two separate layers now into just one layer here now what we can do is size this down in fact i'm going to delete this one purely because I don't think I contoured it um, so let's just pull this over to here so that's my house and my home message what I'm going to do is show you how I did that now so I've got my text box on the screen I just type in happy new home I'm just going to click away from it and bring it down here I'm going to move this one out of the way Let's make that a little bit smaller and then I'm going to use the curve tool at the top to bend that round. So I just click on curve and there's two different ways of doing it. You can either go to the left which is going to bend it that way or you can go to the right which bends it down. I want it to go down so I'm just going to slide my bar across there to about maybe a third of the way across the bar. Then again, because I want to do this as a print then cut sentiment, I'm going to make sure it's really black, so it's the same black. Then I'm going to give that an offset. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than the one I used for the house. And now I'm going to change that again to be white. Now what I'm going to do is just come down here. In fact, let's check that offset to see if it needs contouring. It doesn't, that's fine. There's nothing there that needs to be contoured. Let's select both of those layers again. And then we're going to come down to the bottom again and click on flatten. Now that's all one layer again, the same as the house. We're going to do another offset. I'm going to make that really skinny. So that's just about two millimeters. And I'm going to change that to be this grey colour because I'm going to do that in the oyster coloured cardstock. Let's just group all that together. Okay, so that's done. So I'm just going to move that down so that it fits on my house. I'm going to delete that one as well. Let's group both of those together for a moment. Now what I want to do is make myself a square that's going to be the same size as my card that I'm using. So the card that I'm using is 7 inches square which is just under 18 centimetres. So let's just pull that out to be... Okay, so it's about 17.8 centimetres. Let's change that to be white and what we want to do now is just click on a range at the top and we want to make sure that we send that layer to the back. And as you can see, it did flip from the top here all the way down to the bottom on the layers panel. 
so now we know that is at the back let's move our house over here so now we can use this square to resize our house so that when we put it onto our card it's going to look perfect so what I'm going to do is just give it a little stretch down because I'm going to pop it straight in the centre by just selecting everything clicking on a line and then selecting centre and I think what I may do as well is put another small square around the outside here just to make it a little bit more fun and to add a little bit more dimension to the card so let's grab another square and I think I might just pull that down here that's fabulous let's click on it and then I'm going to just send backward and then that is going to be roughly correct. Let's select everything again and centre. And then I'm just going to select that grey portion and I think I'm going to make it, um, I don't want it to be the same grey as the background you see. So I'm going to just do it in this pinky colour. It's not going to cut in pink but it's just so that we can see it's a different layer. So we don't need this white portion now so we can hide that. So now that we've got rid of that square, we're ready almost to make this project. So what we want to do is just double check that we've got everything correct. And I can see there's a small error to start with. My offset is set as a print then cut and I don't want that to be. So I'm just going to select that layer in my layers panel. It's highlighted in the green. I'm going to come up to the top here to where it says operation. As you can see, it currently says print then cut. If I click on that, I'm going to just change that to basic because that's going to be a... Uh, glittery layer so I'm just going to quickly change that color to be the darker gray that it was before and now I think I'm happy with that everything looks pretty good let's go through to make it and just check that we've got everything on there how it needs to be and it's ready to go so as expected we've got three mats here when we go through to make it we have our first page which is print then cut as you can see there you've got the registration marks on here so that the machine knows where it needs to cut when it's doing that portion of the project we have the happy new home and we've got the house which is perfect the next layer is our big square that we're going to use for the backing of the card just so it makes it a little bit more interesting and then the third one is the offset for the happy new home so we're all good with that so let's click back to the print then cut layer i'm going to click on continue and it's going to search for my machine at the top i'm only using one machine today for this project so it's found it straight away then my first step is to print what i need to print so i'm going to click on send to printer and then it's going to bring up this dialog box so this is the print setup box now when you're doing foiling it must be a toner printer that you're using you can't use a inkjet printer it just won't work because the toner basically becomes reactive with the heat from the mink machine and it makes it stick to the foil so you cannot do it with an inkjet printer so make sure that you select your correct printer i am using my brother 2350 dw I am going to turn off bleed for this project because we don't need bleed and I also don't need to use system dialog with this printer either. So I'm just going to pop this piece of card into my printer now and then print it out and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's printed out. This is my printer that I'm using for doing my foiling so what I need to do is open the front and back slots so that I can manually feed the cardstock through. This printer will take anything up to about 300 GSM, so it's a really good one, especially if you're starting out. It's pretty cheap as well, so don't be afraid to give it a go. If you haven't got a printer, this is the perfect starter one for you. then as you can see it's a really nice deep black so it's perfect for what we want to do with it the next thing to do then is to cut this out on your Cricut you can either cut it out first before you foil it or you can cut it out after you foil it I prefer to cut it out before I foil purely because if the Cricut messes up the cut or anything's not quite right you haven't wasted your foil and you can do that afterwards as well so what I'm going to do is grab myself a mat and I'm going to cut this out 
as you can see then on the screen the status in number one has changed to printed and it's given us the option now to set our base material so this particular cardstock is from Hobbycraft it's about 120 GSM I think I usually use the medium cardstock setting for this one so I'm going to select that I am not changing my pressure but I am using my deep point blade rather than my fine point blade and this is just because I find with my machine I get a much better cut than what I would if I was using a fine point so you just need to know your machine yourself as to which blade you're going to use for this particular project so now that that's done what I'm going to do is pop this mat into the machine and it's going to do its scan and then it's going to cut it out for me and we'll come back then and do the next couple of layers Okay, I've got all of my elements cut out. So I picked up this little bit of dotty polka dot card that I found in one of my stashes. And it's just white with the um, debossed little dots on it, which I thought would be really nice as the background for the house. It goes quite nicely with that champagne coloured cardstock that I'm going to use there. So I have that and then I have my two different printouts. I've got my house and my happy new home. My print then cuts a little bit off at the moment. I do need to calibrate I think by the looks of it but um, I'll do that later and then I've got my offset that I made here with that champagne card that I'm going to use now I'm going to keep this out of the way because I don't want any glitter to go onto my print because that will affect the quality of the foil adherence so I'm going to move my dots and my little bit of champagne card out of the way pop them completely out of sight and then I'm going to work on this here so the one thing that you do really need to make sure of as I just said is that there's nothing on your printout that's going to stop the foil from sticking to it because it will create a barrier between the foil and the toner and then of course you're going to have a little black spot on your design so what I normally do is just use a makeup brush there's a lady on Facebook that I follow on the foiling snobs club and she always uses a makeup brush so I'm going to use my little makeup brush just to dust that off make sure that's really nice and clean now what I'm going to do is just grab my sleeve that came with my mink machine and that's what that looks like it's just a really clear heat resistant plastic sheet and I'm just going to move those to one side so I've got my sleeve here what I'm going to do is open it up I'm going to just pop those two items in my sleeve I'm going to close it for now and then I'm going to get my foil ready so whilst we're doing that I'm going to get my machine and I'm going to put that on this is my mink then I'm going to plug it in now and get it heating up so I'm just going to plug it in over here and what I'm going to do is press this button I don't know whether it's turned on but press this button and I'm going to get that heating up to heat number three as you can see that is flashing red once it's heated up it's going to turn green and we'll hear a little beep to tell us that it's ready to go so i'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit and then we'll prepare the foil to go onto the design and let's grab the foil out then and this one as i said before is the heidi swap gold foil it's their own brand and it's from Hobbycraft. What I'm going to do, again, make sure that you don't touch the other side of the foil here. Try and keep it as clean as possible. I'm just going to cut out a piece that should be big enough for my design. Just using it underneath as a rough sort of guide template. As soon as I cut off the piece that I want, I'm just going to roll this back up and pop it back into the plastic box that it comes with just to help keep it protected and clean. Then I'm going to again get my makeup brush and just dust off that foil just in case anything has happened to get on there. Sometimes even with all this preparation you will still find that something will get stuck to it. I'm going to just open up my sleeve now and it goes with the gold side facing up towards us and the silver side is underneath. I'm just going to roll that back down over it and then give it a good press down with my hand just to make sure that that is fully flat and nicely stuck down inside of there. Let's go back over to the mink and put this through. As you can see then the light has turned green on the machine so it's ready to go. I'm just going to pull it forwards a touch here 
All I'm going to do now then is just get my sleeve and just slide it straight through into the machine. Here is the finished article then. So now all we need to do is make sure that it is cooled down fully. So you'll be able to feel that it's cool to the touch after probably about 30 seconds or so. It does get quite hot when it comes straight out of the machine. So just be careful that you don't burn yourself. All I'm gonna do then is just open up the sleeve. I'm gonna try and keep that foil flat so we don't get a sneak peek at what it looks like. And then this is the most satisfying thing in the whole world to do. Just pull back that foil. And you can see how absolutely perfect that foiling is. If you look at the piece I've taken off, it's got all the remnants of that design left behind there where it hasn't needed to stick to it. So where you can see all the gold here, that is the white on the cardstock. And then where it's clear and you can see my hand through it, that's where it would have been black on the printout. So it's stuck to it. Let's just throw that away. Unfortunately, we can't reuse it. I'm just going to take those two pieces out. Let's fold up my transfer wallet and just put that out of the way again so it stays nice and clean and tidy. And then these are the two pieces here. Look at that. The sheen on it is amazing. And the same with the happy new home part as well. It looks so lovely. Right, let's put it all together. So what we're gonna do is grab ourselves one of these pre-cut cards. I've just taken one out of the package and here is the actual card itself. You can see inside it's pre-scored and ready to go. Um, this is my piece that's gonna go on here. Then I'm gonna pop my house on the top and then I have my happy new home to go on there as well. So what I'm gonna do is put all this together now. Let's decide what we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna glue this bit down. So I'm just using some Colal glue here in one of my precision tip bottles. So easy to use. I love this glue because it doesn't make any warping on any card or paper that you might use it on. Sometimes with a wet glue, you'll see like a, where I've put that wiggle of the glue on there. You will see that through the cardstock, but this stuff does not do that. You do not get any warping at all. So I just put that on there and then I'm just going to pop it down onto my card. Just give it a good press. You can wait for it to go a bit tacky if you want to. Um, but I haven't bothered on this occasion. Let me try and find some foamies. There we go. I'm going to use foamies for this happy new home. It's going to be interesting to see actually if this sticks. So let's just put a couple of foamies on the back of here. These are just um, ones I've picked up at craft shows, but I do buy them from Hobbycraft sometimes as well. They're about a pound for three sheets, which is a pretty good price. I don't usually scrimp on them. I usually like to completely overload my designs with sticky foamies. There is the sentiment. And I'm going to stick that on there with some foamies as well, just to make it stand up a little bit and look pretty good. I actually think I'm going to put an offset on the house because I think it might look a bit flat without. And this is what I love about card making and stuff because you can decide as you go along whether you're going to change your design or adapt it a little bit. So I think I may do that in a moment. I'm going to leave that off actually for a second. Let's just nip back into design space. I'm going to just grab this house off here. So let's just ungroup. I'm going to just take that house away and I'm just going to add a small offset. Um, it was 212 I think. I can't really remember exactly what it was but it should be about that. Let's just get that over there. As you can see it needs contouring again. So just click on it. Um, it won't let me contour because it's set as a print then cut. If you find that you have the contour function greyed out, it's usually something to do with your operation type. So as you can see, mine is set to print then cut. If I come up the top to basic, change that again, 
it's going to bring contour up for me and then I can again either click on each thing individually like that to get rid of it or I can just hide all the contours that's perfect I am going to just group those together for a second and hide everything else on the page let's go to make it and I'm going to cut out this offset and then I'll come back to you once I've done that and we'll put it all together There we go, I've just cut that little offset out, got a bit of masking tape still on it. I just think this will add a little bit more to the design, so I'm going to pop that onto there again, just with some foamy, so it makes it stand up the same as the sentiment does. So let's do that now. Now then, I'm just going to move my bits of bobs out of the way. We just need to make sure we get this placed in roughly the right place. So let's open the card up, make sure we've got it the right way around. And then that's going to go on the front there. And then that is going to go on the top now. I don't think I'm going to use foamies to put that on actually. I think I'm going to just stick it on. So let's get some glue on the back of here. Just going by eye just to make sure I've got it in the right spot. You could measure it if you wanted to. But what I'm going on is these dots, and I'm just counting that there's four there, and then there's four there, so it's roughly centered. And then I'm on these three at the bottom here, using those as a ruler as well, just to make sure that they're in the right spot. And then this one I think is going to be a little bit more difficult, so I'm just going to lift it up so I can see because when it's flat on the table I can't see it that well right so I've got the foamies on the back of here already and I'm going to just pop that on there I'd forgotten actually that I'd put those on but I think the sentiment will look nice being a little bit more upright when you're making a card like this as well you can always put yourself a paper insert inside and get the Cricut to write a message if you want to but I am just going to write my own message in this this is for a friend that's moved from Portland in Oregon to Arizona recently with her um, new fiance so I'm going to send this to her it's going to go all the way from England to Arizona that looks straight yeah, that looks so cute Look at that, it's so beautiful, so shiny and lovely and I think it's going to be a really nice addition to my friend's new house in Arizona. That is it then guys, that is the card all finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to subscribe, drop me any questions and comments that you might have down below and I will answer you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again for another one really soon. Bye!